So for module 7e, I want to start using these thermochemical equations. We did one example of this in the last one when we talked about melting of the ice and how it took 6 kilojoules per mole to melt the ice at 0 degrees C, but let's actually start delving into this a little further and using these thermochemical equations or balanced equations with appropriate value delta H provided in order to calculate the amount of heat given off or absorbed during chemical reaction. So first, thermochemical equations. We, to date, we've been writing equations like this. One mole of N2 gas reacts with one mole of O2 gas to produce two moles of NO gas. We can actually write these reactions thermodynamically though. It's written the same way. We still have your balanced equation written. We still, I'm trying to circle it up there. It goes. So have your balanced equation written, but we also specify the heat of reaction. Delta H, unless otherwise specified, is determined at one atmosphere and 25 degrees C. And the values in the back of your book are determined at one atmosphere and 25 degrees C. So if you're looking for these values, you're doing example problems, there's an appendix in your book that has all of these listed. But this is how we write a thermochemical equation. We can also tell from writing the equation this way, I can tell you that this is an endothermic reaction. Why? Because delta H is positive. So just seeing that value there tells me that this um, reaction takes energy. The si system gains energy from the surroundings. The way this looks, and the way we can write this out, let's say we've got your reactants down here. And your products are at a higher energy level. So delta H of reaction, we put a little um, symbol here, this little, when I write this, this means standard state. For enthalpy, that means one atmosphere, 25 degrees C. We don't always write it, sometimes we do. Um, but if you see it, it does mean standard state. This equals positive 180.5 kilojoules. So if I'm going from N2 O2, um, N2 plus O2 to 2 moles of NO, it's going to take 180.5 kilojoules to do that. What that also means, though, is that the reverse reaction, delta H reaction, breaking, um, having 2 moles of NO react to form 1 mole of N2 and 1 mole of O2, would release 180.5 kilojoules. So if it's written one, um, if it's written as positive one direction, it's negative the other direction. If the reaction flips around, it's the opposite sign. Because these are state functions. We don't care how we got there, we only care where we're at. So again, it takes 180.5 kilojoules for one mole of N2 to react with one mole of O2 to produce two moles of NO. Two moles of NO can react to produce one mole of N2, one mole of O2, and it will release 180.5 kilojoules of energy to do so. So a thermochemical equation. This includes a balanced chemical equation with the enthalpy change, delta H, written next to it. It is important to note the stoichiometric coefficients in a thermochemical equation refer to the number of moles of reactants and products. So this comes into play just like it has when we've done any stoichiometry so far. We have to keep these balanced values, these coefficients out in front in our equations. Three rules for thermochemical equations. Number one, your conditions must be specified. The shortcut is standard thermodynamic conditions or standard state. That's why we write the delta H not Rxn. This not symbol means standard conditions. This little Rxn, this is helping me know that it's standard enthalpy of reaction. We could have delta HFOR for formation, dissolution. There's all kinds of different things that we can do. This is Rxn means reaction. So again, we could have FUS, which is fusion. 
can't spell. Could have DISS, which is dissolution. You could specify combustion, etc. Okay, there's a the little subscript there just tells you what type you're looking at. We can also call this your standard enthalpy change. All under standard conditions, under standard state, all solutions have a one molar concentration. This comes more into play second semester, but it is important to know. All liquids and gases are at one atmosphere of pressure, and the temp is um, assumed to be 25 degrees C unless otherwise stated. Number two, when the reaction is reversed, the sign of delta H changes, as I showed on the previous slide. If I went from one mole of N2 reacting with one mole of O2 to produce two moles of NO, it consumed 180.5 kilojoules. If I went two moles of NO reacting to form one mole of N2 and one mole of O2, it released 180.5 kilojoules. I reversed the reaction and the sign on delta H changed. The enthalpy change delta H is for the specified number of moles of reactants and products. So just to illustrate what we mean, again, one mole of N2 reacting with one mole of O2 gives me two moles of NO, positive 180.5. I flip this reaction around. Now two moles of NO is giving me one mole of N2 and one mole of O2, and I see that my sign has flipped as well. One mole of NO giving me a half a mole of N2 and a half a mole of O2. So this reaction, I, call, I write this as flipped. This arrow means flipped. This is means it was multiplied through by one half or divided by two and we see the value for delta H has been divided by two. Again, the first equation means that when one mole of N2 reacts with one mole of O2 to form two moles of NO, the enthalpy change is positive 180.5 kilojoules. When measured under standard conditions, we do have the little symbol here. We have other equations we can use to get to things when they're not under standard conditions. Let's go ahead and work a couple examples. What is the amount of heat required to produce 55 grams of NO gas from N2 and O2? So I want to know the amount of heat. This will be in kilojoules. Number of kilojoules. And I am trying to produce 55 grams of NO. I know that one mole of NO weighs 30.01 grams of NO. So just like before, you need to convert to moles. Now I've got moles of NO, but I know that for every two moles of NO produced, 180.5 kilojoules of energy is required. So times 180.5 kilojoules per two moles of NO. That cancels my moles of NO. Do not forget that two there. This is a stoichiometric relationship. 165 kilojoules. Again, 180.5 is for 2 moles of NO. What this means is to produce 55 grams of NO gas from N2 and O2, I would have to provide 165 kilojoules of heat. Let's work one more example. How much heat is given off when 75 grams of aluminum oxide is formed from aluminum and oxygen? Number of kilojoules. I'm reacting 75, or I'm um, producing 75 grams of aluminum oxide. And I want to know how much heat is given off. It's given, I know it's being given off because it's a negative value here. It's an exothermic reaction. So 75 grams of aluminum oxide Convert that to moles of aluminum oxide. Molar mass is 101.96 grams. It's negative 3351 kilojoules. 
for every two moles of aluminum oxide produced. So the amount of heat, um, heat given off will be negative 1230 kilojoules. So again, this is, you can refer to this like a mole to mole ratio. Okay, practice some examples like this and be able to do these because they are important that you understand how much energy is being consumed or produced in a reaction.